Hello everybody and welcome to this new session which is about drawing a plan of a survey area by hand to a specific scale. So let's start. If you surveyed an area using tape and offset method for example, or theodolite, or total station, or any other surveying method, and you collected a lot of measurements of your survey area, and now your aim is to produce a plan to a scale based on all of these measurements that you have collected okay so this is the aim of today's session the tools that you will need for producing a plan may include a drawing board and drawing sheet of course some kind of rulers triangle protractor drawing compass if you have circles in your area and you would like to represent them you will need a drawing compass and also you might need a circles ruler like this one if you have small circles in your area it will help a lot in drawing small circles so each circle has diameter that you can use for representing the circular features in your area and also of course you will need pencils, eraser and of course guys for perfection if you would like to trace your a plan in ink after you complete your drawing you will need pens different thickness 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 to represent different lines and also you will need a ruler for letters and numbers as you can see here to help you in writing the title of your drawing or your name or the symbols whatever you like using this ruler it will help you to produce a professional plan in the end okay so in the end of this session guys you are going to learn how to produce a plan similar to this one So let's look at this plan guys and let's go quickly through the main elements of the plan. As you can see here in the corner here, you have to include plan number or title as you can see here, your name or your group for example, your survey group etc. So some main information about you and your plan here. And also you need to include the scale as you can see here this is a graphical scale and also you can use a scale as a ratio for example 1 to 200 1 to 300 etc as a scale and also it should include north direction as you can see here this surveyor has located the north direction down here as you can see from my view it would be better if you locate this north in a different place for example we have here empty space you can locate your north direction north arrow here for example it's up to you drawing a plan is kind of science and art as well so you need to use your artistic sense for the final layout of your plan okay and also we have an important element which is key to plan symbols as you can see here this surveyor here have used this symbol for the survey station so when I see A, B, C, D these are all survey stations here okay and for example as well they have used this symbol for the tree so when I see this symbol I understand these are trees And also the surveyor have used this symbol for buildings as you can see here this for buildings so that means to me this is a building this is a building as well this is a building this is a building as well but if you look here guys there is something very important so I have this symbol here on the plan when I look at the key to the symbols to the right here I can't see something like this so I don't know if this is a building or this is something else so it's not clear to me 
if it is a building why we have different shape here it should be similar to this one if it is not a building what is that so you need to include clear symbols okay so that again the reader will understand every uh, single feature in your area okay so here I can see a pond for example this is the symbol this is the pond it's a clear okay here in the UK in fact we have some like uh, if you would like to use the symbols published by the Ordnance Survey Agency I will let you have a look at the symbols used for professional production of maps so here I have this document published by the Ordnance Survey for the symbols uh, used for 1 to 25k scale maps for example if you go down you can download this from the Ordnance Survey website guys it's available so here for example we have these symbols used for as you can see here for roads we have these symbols used by the Ordnance Survey and here we have some symbols for the railways okay we have some symbols for the public rights of way etc okay a lot of symbols for different kind of features okay, here for borders for example and here we have contour lines as you can see here these are the symbols for contour lines for vegetation and so on so let's return to our plan as you can see here the surveyor have used for contour lines this symbol like these lines if you look here you have a contour line here this is 28 contour line as you can see this is the contour line and you have 29 you have 30 you have 31 etc and you have this one 26 when you look here guys you have 26 and then 28, 29, 30, 31. I think it would be better if you use the same interval in your plan or map. So if you have an interval for the contour lines, for example, of one meter, you need to include another contour line. Now we have here 26, but we don't have 27. There should be 27 here. And then 28, 29, 30, 31. If the contour lines interval is one meter why don't we have the 27 okay if the contour lines interval is two meters it should be 26 and then 28 and then 30 so we don't need 29 30 and then 32 if we have it etc so now let's take an example in a previous uh, video guys I have explained in, in details how to collect measurements using table and offset method so you can watch this uh, video it is important to understand how we collected these measurements that you can see here on the right so I explained how to use this method again to collect the measurements so this is a sketch or booking sheet to the right as you can see here okay so now based on these measurements that we collected we are going now to produce a plan to a scale so I explained in that video guys how to find the best scale to fit any size of sheet so let's say guys that our aim is to produce a plan on A4 sheet we know that the size of A4 sheet is 29.7 by 21 centimeters Now what is the best scale for this area to fit A4 sheet? So I will repeat these steps quickly. So first you need to find the maximum length of your area. So here in my area I have this is station A, the first point, and this is station B here. It is here guys, station B. So these are the main survey stations that I have along the baseline. This is the baseline between them. 
Again, all of this is explained in a previous video called Taban of Sister Surveys. Please do watch that if you haven't watched it yet. So here the maximum length of my area from my measurements, it is about 30 meters. And the maximum width of my area from my measurements again, I will look at the measurements here at these numbers guys and then I will see for example here in this direction the maximum length is about 20 meters from here to here and in that direction the maximum length, length might be 7.7 .7, let's say 8 so 20 meter in this direction 8 meters in this direction so that means the width is 28 meters so the whole width from here to here of my area is 28 meters and the whole length is 30 meters. Now I know the length and the width of my area and I know the length and the width of my plan which is A4 sheet as you know. So to find the best scale to fit A4 sheet for this specific area we are going to find the scale for length, scale for width and then to select a common scale smaller than these values. First, for the length, the length of the paper, which is 29.7 centimeters, divided by the length of the area, which is 30 meters. Convert 30 meters into centimeters, it would be 30, 100 centimeters. And then to convert this to a scale format, divide the top by 29.7, it would be 1, and divide the bottom by 29.7, it would be 101. Now, this is the scale for the length. The scale for the width guys, 21, the width of the paper divided by the width of your area, 28 meters and then 21 by 21, it's 1, 2800 divided by 21, it would be 133, so this is the scale for width. Now of course this is the smaller value, so I have 1 to 133 and as you know there is no common scale 1 to 133 the common scales might be 1 to 100, 1 to 150, 1 to 200, 1 to 250 etc. So in our case we need to find the common scale smaller than this value smaller than 1 to 133 it would be 1 to 150 so I would say now the best scale for this area 30 meters by 28 meters to fit A4 sheet is 1 to 150. So once I decided on my scale, now I will move to the next step. I need to find out the length and width on my plan now. I know my area is 30 meters. So let's convert this using my scale. So 30 meters, convert this into centimeters, it would be 3000 centimeters divided by the scale which is 150. So the 30 meters on my plan would be represented by 20 centimeters as you can see here. So this is the length of my area on my plan. For the width, the same, 28 meters divided by the scale 150 it would be here 18.7 centimeters so now I know my area would be represented by 20 centimeters by 18.7 centimeters on my A4 sheet so as you know the length of my A4 sheet is about 30 centimeters and the length of my area is 20 centimeters so there will be 10 centimeters empty okay again so the length of my area guys here it would be 20 centimeters and the length of the paper is 30 centimeters so here there would be 10 centimeters empty from here to here now the next step guys is to locate your area 
within the sheet in a good way okay and now here it is up to you to decide for example let's say this is my empty sheet this is my a4 sheet the red line represents the borders of my sheet so you can say okay I'm going to locate all of my map all of my plan sorry here within this area here and then I will leave from here to here 10 centimeters empty and for example I will leave one and a half from here to here empty and one and a half for example from here to here empty it is up to you to decide in fact on the layout on the final layout and this is what I mentioned before you need to use your sense uh, to locate this and you might say okay I will leave this uh, space empty on the right so that I can add my key the information about the plan and also you can add here of course the scale for example you can add north direction etc or you might say no I would like to locate my map or my plan in the middle and then I can add the key here to the right and for example the information about my plan myself to the left and then I can add for example the scale here and I can add north direction here for example it is up to you so again and again the final layout is up to you so after you decided on the final layout of your plan now you need for this specific example using tab and offset technique and we have just one baseline you need to draw your baseline so that you can start representing all the features and this is the most important stage in the whole thing how to represent these features in their exact locations on the plan if your baseline for example a b this is station a and this is station B here survey stations if your baseline this one is in the middle of the of your area you can just locate it here in the middle draw it in the middle and then you can start as you will see now locating the features if it's down a bit draw it down okay for example if from here to here longer distance from here to here for example is longer than distance from here to here you can locate your baseline down or up so you can decide on that now once you have drawn the baseline AB now you can move the, to the next stage which is starting rep representing the features in your area at this stage you can keep this frame here of your area this in blue or you can remove it so it is not very important and this is up to you again so let's say I'm going to remove this frame now I've drawn my baseline AB and now I will get my booking sheet in front of me because it is very important this is my booking sheet and now I will start transferring all the features from the booking sheet to the plan as you know from table and offset lecture to represent any point using table and offset you need two measurements let's have a closer look here for example now I'm going to represent this corner of the building here so this is a building here we have this building this is the wall of the building this is the wall of the building etc so I'm going now to represent this point here this corner of the building so from station A the first station along the baseline I have a number here so this is the first distance and then from this number to the feature in this case our feature is the corner of the building so another measurement from here to here in this case is 13.35 meters as you can see here so now 
for this point I have along the baseline 4.4 meters and from the baseline to the feature to the corner 13.35 meters okay now let's return to the plan now you will get your ruler now this is zero point here you know we started from zero here along the baseline until 30 meters for this example it might be 70 it might be 15 it depends on your measurements of course guys okay so here I have so using my ruler now first I have to, to convert all of my numbers using my scale the scale in our case was 1 to 150 so that means each one centimeter is 150 centimeters on the ground so let's take this example so to convert this number using my scale it would be it is 440 centimeters always use centimeters divided by my scale which is 150 it would be in this case 2.9 centimeters okay so now on my plan I need to measure from 0 from a point here Two point nine centimeters along the baseline, and then from this point, I need to measure thirteen point three five. So thirteen point three five. Convert this into centimeter. It would be thirteen three five divided by one hundred fifty. It would be in this case eight point nine centimeters. Okay, so then I will need to measure 8.9 centimeters from the baseline to the corner and make sure that these are perpendicular to each other this is a right angle because of that it is better to use the triangle to make sure that this is a right angle here let's return to our plan Now, using my ruler, I will measure along the baseline 2.9. You need to be very accurate, okay? Now, the other measurement to represent this point, which is the building corner in this case, we need to measure 8.9 centimeters from the baseline to this corner, okay? And this is my point here. okay guys and now we will repeat this for every single feature or every single point now this is the building corner I have my booking sheet of in front of me of course now for example to represent the other corner of the building this one along the baseline I have a number here and then from the baseline to the corner I have a number here okay and don't forget this should be right angle in table and offset all of these should be right angles so it's better to use the triangle to make sure that these two lines are perpendicular to each other this line and any measurement here so for the second corner for example I measured along the baseline the distance after you convert this using the scale and then along the baseline and then I will represent the point now I, now I have a point here and a point here I can join them using this straight line and so on for this point for example I have a number along the baseline which is here and then a, a number from the baseline to the corner and then I can locate this as well here but you need to do this very very accurately in your work 
okay? And this is the way to represent all the features. Now, for example, to represent this curve here, you need from your measurements two points because the curve is straight line. So if you have a measurement from here to here, this is one point from here to here. For example, if you have it, you have two points and then when you're drawing, you can draw a straight line. To represent the curve here, you need more than one point and then you can join them. accurately to represent a circular feature like this one this polar for example you will need the diameter of the feature and then its distance from the center to the baseline so if you have the distance from the center of the feature here to the baseline and of course you will need the distance along the baseline and then you can represent this in its exact location so along the baseline, you will measure it using the scale from the baseline to the feature. And here you can draw it using the diameter, the measured diameter. Now, if this circle is small, you can use the circles ruler to draw this in a very neat and accurate way. Okay, guys, so let's return to the final plan. This is of course for a different, completely different area, completely different example, but this is a completed plan. I wanted you to see it. For this example, we have a lot of control stations, not just two. We have A, B, C, D, as I mentioned in the beginning. Okay, and just to remind you again, guys, if you have different directions or angles in your area, you need to use the uh, protractor. So, for example, you have here a baseline between A and B, and you have, for example, another baseline between A and H. So, if you have the angle between them, you need the uh, protractor to represent this. And also, if you have big circles, you need the drawing compass and so on. So you might need these different tools. So here, if you look at the writing, guys, look at the writing. It is very neat and nice. The letters are very neat and nice because they are written using a letters ruler so that you will have a neat writing as well. So as you can see here, we don't have in the final plan the baselines between the survey stations we have the survey stations a b c d etc but we don't have these lines we don't draw these lines because in our final plan the aim is to represent all the permanent features that we can see on the ground and you know that the baseline is not permanent feature but the survey station a nail or a wooden peg it would be in the ground and it is good to include this on your final plan the final plan shouldn't include any baselines any measurements like numbers or the numbers that we use are not here it should include only just permanent features that you see on the ground and if your plan includes contour lines like this here you can just write the elevation of each contour line apart from that no numbers should be included okay no measurements should be included if I would like to measure any feature I will use your scale that you have provided here and then I will know so for this scale here it says this length for 10 meters okay so I will understand okay using this scale I can measure any feature or any distance that I need I can measure this building or any distance okay I hope that was useful today guys in today's session I just tried to speak about the basics of hand drawing this is for the very beginners uh, of course there are a lot of methodologies there is a whole branch in science called the cartography just about producing maps and plans but for you these are the basic principles to let you start understanding how to produce a plan using hand drawing okay so in today's session just I would summarize what you have learned you learned how to find the best scale to fit any size of sheet and then how to represent different kinds of features what are the tools used for hand drawing and how to produce a final neat nice accurate plan 
Okay, thank you very much for listening and enjoy your time and enjoy your hand drawing as well and use always your artistic sense for producing your plans and maps. Bye now.